Shalom, Israel. It's your brother, J.D. Nijah. Back with another message for the children of Israel, the Yasharala, the princes of the power. The one-third elect remnant that's going to get up on out of here with us. All praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Bashem HaKadosh. Our Heavenly Father, the only begotten Son, and the Holy Spirit that gives us this wisdom, knowledge, and ability to press, push out these truths in these dangerous, perilous times we live in. Shalom to the um, to the speckled bird, uh, Israelite foreigners also who are scattered across the four corners of the <laughs> earth that um, look like the other nations, but are actually of the bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our forefathers. Um, so I was going to go into, um, I was going to go into why it is that in Revelation it says, if your name's not written in the book, um, then you're not going to be saved. And that goes into some genealogies and things like that. But as I was looking into it, I came across something that is probably a, at least for me, it's more fun and, and less work. Not that I'm lazy or anything, but um, I, I'm not even, I wasn't even sure what I was going to find when I was going to look into um, the names. I'm pretty sure that um, it has something to do with reincarnation and your name, your name appeared at some point in here um, in the Bible among someone somewhere and eat and either either you're fit for destruction or you're fit for the kingdom but that's not the message that i'm gonna i'm gonna put out i'm actually gonna i went i went looking for the genealogies right and i was gonna see um because i know it, it talks a lot about this person that person was begotten by this you know it, it goes into um who who gave birth to who and what the family bloodlines are so when I when I went back to Genesis, I, I came upon um, um, first the Jacob's descendant de descendants, right? So we have Jacob and we have Esau. We have the good and we have the evil. And Esau Edom is the border of wickedness per Malachi um, three three, I think it is. But um, we know we know that these. Edomites are less than us because the Bible tells you in Genesis here the difference. So um, right here, the birth of Benjamin, right before um, Benjamin was the last born. He was the number 12 of 12. And um, when, he, when he was born, his mother, Rachel, died. Um, I'll just read through it real quick. And they journeyed from Bethel, and there was but a little way to come to Ephrath. And Rachel travailed, and she had hard labor. And it came to pass, when she was in hard labor, that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. And it came to pass, as her soul was departing, for she died, that she called his name Benoni. But his father, Jacob, called him Benjamin. Benoni means son of my sorrow and we know sorrow is better than mirth and sorrow has to do with wisdom because the more you know the more grief you're going to have because when you realize how wicked this place is um that's when that's when you start getting understanding so then it talks about the death of Rachel, and Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. So um, an interesting point is Benjamin was born, he was the only son that was born in Bethlehem, uh, the birthplace of our Savior. 
uh, and Ephrath is um, is that land right there of Bethlehem. Uh, and Jacob set up a pillar upon her grave. That is the pillar of Rachel's grave unto this day. So, um, the men of Benjamin are, are set before the kingdom as a pillar um, due to Jacob and Rachel's love for each other and the fact that Rachel sacrificed. She wanted... She wanted sons so bad, and Benjamin was the last of the progenitors of um, Jacob. So then it goes into Jacob's descendants. This is pretty interesting. Um, this is all you hear. This is all you have right here. Jacob's descendants, right? It goes into um, Salakia, brother. We're gonna get more comfortable. Um. <laughs> this is it. It goes from here, from here, 21 to 27, and then it comes over here, and that's it. That's that's it for Jacob's descendants. So, uh, and then it says the death of Isaac. And this is this is an interesting um, scripture too. In the days of Isaac, were. A hundred and four score years, and Isaac gave up the ghost and died and was gathered unto his people, being old and full of days. And his sons, Esau and Jacob, buried him. So then, <laughs> oh man, this, this stuff cracks me up. So then when you, when you go over to Esau, Esau's descendants. Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. So when we, when we say es Esau, Edom... We're talking about these these people from <laughs> Mount Seir and Basra, Basra and, the, and these things. This is where you where we get some of the um, the verbiage about <laughs> the Dukes of Edom. So um, it starts right there in thirty six. Look at how look at how the descendants of Esau. It goes from thirty six. And then down here is where it says, uh, Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. It doesn't, it can't say it much more plain. Esau is Edom. And Edom is the border of wickedness. <laughs> so if we can find out who these Edomites are, we can figure out who the evil people are. And that's not too hard to do because in the Bible it says in the last days, the wicked would, it, per Job, the wicked, the world was given into the hands of the wicked. I think it's, don't quote me. I, I'm not good at addresses. It's in Job 9. Yeah, I'm not even going to try. I don't want to screw it up. But it's in Job. The, um. The world was given into the hands of the wicked. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites, in Mount Seir. So whenever you hear us talking about Mount Seir, <laughs> we're talking about the birthplace of these dukes of Edom. So <laughs> this is where it says it right here. Uh, the dukes of Edom, right? So I looked into the word duke, and what a duke is, it's a um, it's a lesser dignitary. It's a lesser nobility. It's underneath kings and princes. So when, so, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Salaki brothers, it just, um, when you've been studying this stuff long enough, and then you go back to the Bible and, and read some of the, some of the verbiages, and you realize um, the, it was written this way for a reason. So it, um, it got, look at how, look at how many, um, look at how many kids and, and, um, check this out. It went from 36, one, and they're still going. These are the sons. I'll read some of the names cause some of the names, um, give you an idea of, um, 
when you see these other names later in the Bible, you know that these are the um, Edomites. The sons of Eliphaz, Eliphaz, Eliphaz was one of the buddies that Job, um, that was fucking with Job when he was <laughs> getting judgment. Eliphaz was trying to tell him, no, it's all your fault, dude. You <laughs> Eliphaz was giving him total negative, um, negative regard, right? So I'll just read a few of these names. Eliphaz is one of them. Um, Teman, Teman, the Temanites. Whenever you hear Teman, you know that's the border of wickedness. Zepho, um, Timna, the concubine of um, Eliphaz's son. She bore Eliphaz Amalek. And we all know who Amalek is. Amalek is these um, 1948ers. Um, they're the ones that are in our land right now that are um, pretending to be us. So um, so when you see Timna and Eliphaz, automatically you think of Amalek because that's, <laughs> that's the parents of, of these fucking nasty, wicked uh, Bosrans. I'll read some more. Um, Zara. Um, Anna. Anna. Right here, Anna. Daughter of Zibion. Um, Jeush. Korah. You know Korah. Um, what else we got? Zepho o Omar. So when you so that's when they start talking about the dukes right here. These were the dukes of the sons of Esau. The sons of Eliphaz were born to Esau, Duke Timon, Duke Omar, Duke Zepho, and Duke Canaz. Can Canaanites, Timonites, Omar, you know that's, that, <laughs> just by the sound of it, you know that it came out of the, um, it came out of those mixed people from, uh, from Canaan. Um, what else do we have? The Dukes. Dukes, Dukes, Dukes. They're all... The Lord doesn't min mince words. Slock you, brothers. <laughs> I'm not the most... Um, technological, so I have to do it with my Bible, and I, I like it that way better. Um, so they talk about the Dukes, the Dukes. And then down here... Um, these are the sons of Seir, the Horite who inhabited the land. Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, and Anna. So you see in here, Dukes, Duke, Dukes. So what basically what the Lord is saying is these are these are lesser. These are the lesser children of, of Jacob. Um, these are the wicked. So then it goes, look at how many there are. The children of Zibion, Asia, Anon. Um, so it goes down, down, and then it says, the dukes in the land of Seir. So when you hear Seir, Mount Seir, that's them. Um, and then the kings. The kings of Edom were not... They were just the rulers over these other dukes. Um, these are the kings that reigned in the land of Edom before there reigned any king of the children of Israel. So they were kings, but... There was no, we didn't have kings. And part of the reason why Saul became the first king is because our people were jealous that uh, Edom had kings. And that's an important point to remember is part of our going off was following the ways of these lesser kingdoms. 
So when it says that there was kings over Edom before any king of the children of Israel, <clears throat> that's what drew our mindset into um, that a man can rule over a man. We had Yahushai ruling over us, or Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, and we wanted a man to reign over us, and the Lord gave us good old King Saul, who was also a Benjamite. So that go figure that one out. Um, and here it says, And Bela died, and Joab, the son of Zerah of Basra, reigned in his stead. So when you see Basra, that's another um, code word for uh, the Edomite kingdom. And where Edom is ruling mostly right now is right here in the good old U.S. of A. And Jobab and Husham of the land of Teman reigned in his stead. And then it goes over here. Um, what else does it talk about? Um, brings in the Moabites right here, which are the uh, Chinese. Um, So I don't know, I don't know if, who this Saul is, but um, then it talks some more about the Dukes of Edom. These are the names of the Dukes that came of Esau according to their families after their places, Timna, Alva, and Jetheth. So we had Elah, Pinon, Canaz, Teman. Mibzbar. The these be the dukes. These be the dukes of Edom according to their habitation in the land of their possession. He is Esau, the father of the Edomites. So the wickedness the wickedness that we're experiencing is from these dukes of Edom. They have this earth in their hands right now, and people are bugging out because um, they don't know, they don't realize where we came from, and they don't realize where we're going, and it, and they put their head in the sand, and, and when you put your head in the sand and you're not paying attention, and you're scared to face up to what's going on, that's how you get destroyed. Um, you have to have some nerve. You have to have, the Bible says the Lord told the men of the Lord, gird up your loins and get ready for battle. We are in that battle right now. We are, we are battling for our kingdom and we're going to put these Dukes of Edom in their place. They're not going to, they're not going to be telling us where to go, what to do, what to put in our body, what to not put in our body. We're going to rule and, and, and reign in righteousness because our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And these Dukes of Edom, they're, they're going down. If you haven't noticed, Babylon is falling. This place is in a, this place is in a complete uproar. And Without Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, um, the chance of you being able to call out in the days of the calamities and the travails. And so that's, that's the reason the men of the Lord are doing these messages. You know, there's so many um, misinterpretations of this book. And that's, that's these um, TD Snakes and Creepshow Dollar and, you know, that the plantation Christianity was designed to throw you off track. And if you're still in those whorehouses, those churches of, of iniquity, you know, where, where the Lord 
turn those tables over in the temple, it's the same thing. We're, we're turning the tables over on these people now. We're saying, no, you're not the ones. Get the hell out of the temple. Stop prophesying and stop preaching in the name of someone who's not the true God and stop pretending you are. We're sick of it. We are downright ill from realizing the wickedness, lies, deceit, and just overall filthiness of what this man has done to this planet, to the animals. It's not really a planet, it's a plane. But in this realm, in this in this fishbowl plant plane that we live on, you know, he told us so many lies. And look what he does to the animals. I just heard a message. The, the um, brother was talking about. They're jabbing the animals in the zoos now. What? What? They shouldn't even be in zoos in the first place. We, we should be able to go see these animals in their original habitat. We can't even get on a plane and go to Las Vegas anymore. <laughs> if, you, if you wanted to go there. But, you know what I'm saying? Not only can you not go to Africa and go see a hippo, you can't, they're, they're going to they're gonna jab up all these animals. They're going to, this guy, this Edom, <laughs> this Esau is a mad scientist. And um, he's destroying everything. The food we eat is just fake as all get out. Um. The air we breathe is full of heavy metals that they spray in the air. Our oceans, this one. So they they found out that one of these chemical companies here in California, I forget the name of it now, they dumped like, they know, they know by the, um, by the logs that they have, the trucking logs that they dumped, at least 3,000 barrels of DDT. DDT was a chemical that they used. I forgot what they used DDT for. Because it's been so long, they, they banned it. And um, once they banned it, these people didn't know what to do with the excess DDT. So they put it on ships and they dumped it right here off Palos Verdes. And now... They have the technology, and that's why the Bible says knowledge is increasing, because we're we're finding out a lot of these a lot of this shit, like all the um, all the little Indian kids that that got killed and buried up in Canada, and then you know the Gadite kids. Those were our those are our brothers. Those are Israelites, the ones that made that were made to march from. Um, Georgia all the way to Oklahoma and the in the what is it the walk of tears the I I can't even say some of this shit that they put out because it it's so hurtful the trail of tears they weren't they weren't feeling bad for us they were they they put that word those that verbiage on it to hurt us the trail of tears remember remember how your ancestors were crying they were so they were crying so hard that they were walking in their own tears. This place has to be destroyed. So I'm not going to go on and on because what good's it going to do? Either you're listening, you care, or you have your head in the sand, and you're going to get destroyed. I I'm just doing this because my Lord tells me to tell to say it because it's the truth. These Dukes of Edom. Dukes. You wonder why they call it Dukey, right? Why do they call it Dukey? Because it's a bunch of shh. No more sheet sandwiches. <laughs> that was one of my better videos. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't one of my better videos, but it was one everyone liked because it had sheet in the title. That's, that's where we're at. That's where we're at. 
<laughs> if you're if you're if you're uh, the title has something uh, derogatory and and weird in it, or if your pictures have something sensational, you're gonna go viral. But if you're just sitting here um, with your coffee at the beach with the Bible, telling people the truth, two views, five views, eight views, woo! It's proof right there that the truth, the truth is very rare and very precious. And everything in this world, these people that have uh, viral views on TikTok, you know what TikTok is? It's counting down the days. TikTok, TikTok to your own destruction. Tick-tock, tick-tock. What do you think they call it that? Every. I'm going to say one more thing before I close out. Everything in this realm has a meaning. Um, YouTube, TikTok, um, Face, Facebook, they're getting your facial recognition uh, and you're putting it in a book for them. So they all they have to do is pull up the right page and there you are. People are just don't get it. And um, I would say one of the one of the things that one of the gifts that I have is the gift of words and symbols. And most people will laugh at it when you say um I don't know. I could probably pick up something right here. Um, 7-Eleven select. Why is it select? Who are they selecting it for? They're selecting it to probably to kill you or to damage you or to make you sick. So I'm just, I'm just saying, look, look at the words that people use and the symbols that they use. They have a lot deeper meaning. And if you have any background in symbology or um, etymology you'll see truths that other people don't see and that's what Esau Edom's uh, a master at these Dukes of Edom these um, men of Mount Seir these Bosrans they're also called Idumians um, Amalekites Teman um, Eliphaz They're designed, they, they have the ability and knowledge to twist your mind. That's what witchcraft and sorcery and black magic is. Well, that's for another lesson. This, this one was about the Dukes of Edom. And the reason they're called Dukes is because they're a bunch of shit. This is your brother, J.D. Nigel. I'm out.